Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let's pray together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The Prayer of St. Andrew Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts of your faith at St. Andrew's Academy, and kill in us the fire of your love. Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, direct our imagination, mold our wills, that we may be truly yours, absolutely dedicated to you. Bring us all to be one heart and mind within your holy church, and use us as your will for your glory and the welfare of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Together, let us proclaim Psalm 15. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Only those who obey God and do as they should speak the truth and don't spread gossip. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. They treat others fairly and don't say cruel things. Those who do these things will always stand firm. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees and several teachers of the law of Moses from Jerusalem came and gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples ate without first washing their hands. The Pharisees and all other Jewish people obey the teachings of their ancestors. They always wash their hands in the proper way before eating. None of them will eat anything they buy in the market until it is washed. They also follow a lot of other teachings, such as washing cups, pitchers, and bowls. The Pharisees and teachers asked Jesus, why don't your disciples obey what our ancestors taught us to do? Why do they eat without washing their hands? Jesus called the crowd together again and said, pay attention and try to understand what I mean. The food that you put into your mouth does not make you unclean and unfit to worship God. The bad words that come out of your mouth are what make you unclean. Out of your heart come evil thoughts, vulgar deeds, stealing, murder, unfaithfulness in marriage, greed, meanness, deceit, indecency, envy, insults, pride, and foolishness. All of these come from your heart and they are what make you unfit to worship God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday Chapel. It's me, Mrs. Edwards, and I'm coming to you from the Christian Ed Room as we are growing in God's Word, right? This year, I love this bulletin board. And so what did we hear today when we think about God's Word? I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, our Gospel from Mark today and what Jesus says to us. I want you to touch your heart because I think today's gospel is about what's in your heart and making sure that your heart is healthy and clean and full of good thoughts. So last week, we were hearing from Jesus about how Jesus is the bread of life and how he nourishes us to be Jesus for others. So I like to think that today's gospel that we heard Miss Cooper read so beautifully is an extension of that and thinking about what feeds us, what's in our hearts. And so let, let's break it down a little bit for you. So in Mark's gospel, we hear that there were several teachers from the law of Moses who gathered around Jesus. 
So these are people who really knew the laws of Moses, those commandments that we talk about, how to love God and how to love others. They were like the experts, the teachers, right? They knew what they were all about. And they noticed something as Jesus was gathering with his disciples, that some of these disciples were eating without washing their hands. So think about that for a moment, just maybe the physical aspect of that, right? I mean, would you sit down and eat something before you, you know, washing your hands? So maybe we think about today and, and what that means. I mean, we're so careful with hand washing and especially before we eat our food, right? We wash our hands, we, we then wash our desks, we keep things clean. So back, way back, you know, a thousand, 2,000 plus years ago, or 2,000 years ago, as this event was going on, that hand washing was so important because it was part of the law, part of you know why people would wash their hands, not just for the physical aspect of it, but also there was a spiritual connection. You know, there was, uh, there are even people today who pr who wash hands before they pray. It's part of a spiritual practice. So they questioned Jesus. They said, you know, um, Jesus. None of your disciples washed their hands before they ate. And, and we're taught that you know, we wash our hands and we should wash our pitchers and our bowls. Um, and so why don't they wash their hands? Why didn't they do this? And what does Jesus tell them? He looks at them and he says two words. If you know the two words, you could say it with me. Pay attention. He says that to them in the gospel, right? Pay attention, he says. Pay attention, the food that you are putting into your mouth does not make you unclean and unfit to worship God. This is what makes you unfit and unclean. It's the words that come out of your mouth. So Jesus is thinking about the heart and he says our hearts, right, are capable of doing good things and bad things. It's up to us to decide, right? So you have to think about what's in your heart. And Jesus says, it's more important that you clean your heart, what's inside, than it is to wash your hands. When you clean what's in the heart, what then comes out is already clean. So that's Jesus's message. Are you paying attention? Well, we have wonderful teachers in this school. So I sent an email out to some of the te to the teachers and I said, could you help me with today's gospel lesson? What keeps you clean and your thoughts full of good things? Because our teachers are so good and they always have good things to share and to teach us, okay? So I'm just gonna pull these up here. Um, I asked them for their favorite gospel or Bible words. You know, what do they what do they like in scripture that helps to keep them pure and clean of heart? And so I want to share one with you. This is from Mrs. Williams, our wonderful art teacher. Her favorite scripture is from 1 Corinthians, and it goes like this: it's about all the attributes of love. And this is what it says. This is from 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but love rejoices within the truth. Right? Love. That was beautiful. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. And then Mrs. Starnes, she shared this one. She says, my favorite Bible verse is from Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. That is just beautiful. Do you feel like you're being fed right now? Right? These beautiful, our hearts are getting full of these beautiful words. Well, we have some more. Mrs. Chiochi shared this, and this is from Matthew 28:20. Um, Jesus says, I am always with you. 
I am always with you. That's one that's in my heart right now speaking to me. Thank you, Mrs. Chiochi. And then our kindergarten classes, they're actually learning something really cool. There's sign language. They're doing sign language with Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. A friend loves at all times. Wow, think about all of these scriptures that we heard today, and they all have to do with love. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some, um, we're going to get up, and we're going to learn some sign language. Are you ready? So we're going to sign language Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. So this is the sign language for friend. So it's like this, okay? It's like you're hooking your fingers together. This is friend, okay? A friend, a friend, a friend friend loves. So this is loves. So you want to try that again? A friend, a friend, a friend loves. And then it goes like this, at all times. So at all, kind of like swoosh your hand around, kind of lands on that at all times. You point to your wrist twice, at all times. Something like that. My hands hurt. So We'll try that again. We'll try our best. Are you ready? Proverbs 17, 17. Here we go. A friend, a friend, a friend loves at all times. Let's try that again. A friend, a friend, a friend loves at all times. There's more to times. Sorry. There's more to it. A friend, a friend a friend's love never ends. <laughs> Want to put that all together? I'm trying here. Here we go. You can Google this, okay? Sign language, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend, a friend. A friend loves at all times. A friend, a friend. A friend's love never ends. Amen. Amen. Pay attention. Think about this week, finding God's word. Find something of God's word. Be on the lookout and feed your heart with it. Because that's what cleans your heart. And then share it with others. Share it just like our teacher friends shared with us today. And I want to thank all the teachers for sharing. So how about we do this? Let's all keep standing. And another thing that cleans our heart is prayer. So we've been learning a special prayer. So let's go ahead and together say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you, friends, for being with us today. Let us pray our closing prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.